We are keeping pace with NASA today because they have a brand new mission. It's called PACE, which stands for Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem Mission, and that is set to take off tonight. So I am with NASA expert Ivana Setanich. Ivana, thank you so much for joining us. This is what I read 20 years in the making to make this happen tonight. Tell me everything that you're going to be exploring with this mission. We're going to be exploring everything. Uh, we're going to have opportunity to see our world, our home planet, in ways that we have never been seeing, be able to see before. We're going to be looking at the oceans. We're going to be looking at the atmosphere, how they interact, and telling you so much more about this planet that we love. So let's start with the ocean. 70% yes. of our world is surrounded by ocean, but I feel like it's the thing that we know the least about. How is this satellite going to help us learn more about the deep blue? That's a great point to make. We really don't know a lot about oceans. And I, being an oceanographer, I'm almost going to fly that flag. PACE will bring us a new way of seeing the ocean. Specifically, PACE will be focusing on looking at the life of the ocean, the teeny tiny microscopic plant-like organisms that we call phytoplankton. Um, we don't think about them because we don't see them, but they are the base of the marine food web. Um, they give us oxygen and they control our climate. And we cannot see them with our eyes, but we can see them from space. NASA has 20 years of ocean observations, but that just tells us that there's green stuff in it. <laughs> I don't know who's there. And, you know, you really want to know who's there to so understand better the fisheries, the harmful algal blooms, the climate control services that ocean provides us. It's going to give us so much more. How does this satellite work? How quick is the return back to planet Earth that you're going to get real time data from this? <laughs> Uh, the data is pretty much, uh, you know, coming down semi real time, but like, you know, like one, two hour delay. So it's going to get to us through our like, you know, data relay services back to us at NASA Goddard. We're going to, you know, translate that just beep, 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 beep in some meaningful information. And it's going to be out for everybody in a couple of hours to download. NASA shares this data freely to everybody throughout the world. And that's what we're going to be doing with PACE. Um, additionally, we've been training people all around the world and here in the U.S., water quality managers, fishermen, fishery you know, managers to use this data as soon as we're going to start making it. So like probably two months after the launch, data is going to be there ready for wow. everybody to use. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. And I'm a meteorologist, so I want to talk about the aerosols and the clouds with this. And a lot of people don't realize that aerosols and those tiny particles, that's how clouds and water droplets are going to form because it globs onto it. What are we going to learn from the atmosphere from this new satellite? That's exactly, that's a fact that not too many people understand and, and they don't really understand that we don't know really how these processes work. How these aerosols are actually like, how often do they form clouds? How do they form clouds? Which aerosols form clouds? It's like the same amount of like uh, beautiful questions that we have about atmosphere as an ocean. We have three instruments flying in pace. They're gonna be able to see different colors, but also polarization of the light, which is easiest to explain. Like, you know, take your sunglasses, tilt your head and the world is gonna look a little bit different. And because it's filtering some of the polarization of the light, we're going to be collecting that information. And it's really important so we can see different types of aerosols, distinguish them. Is it a smog? Is it a, is it a wildfire? Is it, I don't know, like things flying from Sahara Desert? Um, and all these teeny tiny particles have different capabilities of forming clouds. So not only are we going to be informing climate, but we're going to be informing the, the, you know, just like air quality, health, and also it's supporting you guys, meteorologists, to understand where the clouds coming from, how are they forming, where are they going? All these important questions that, you know, it's, it's impacting everybody's life. Another great step for humankind. So one more question. You already kind of mentioned this, the community impact. I already know knowledge is number one here because I'm already learning so much from you just talking about the launch. What are we going to learn for years to come and what's going to be the benefit? I, I think, you know, like this is a global mission and we can start from there. We can think about, you know, our, our home planet currently experiencing lots of changes, you know, due to the change in climate. Under, we know that it's changing, but sometimes we just don't have the eyes on the earth to see what are these exactly changes. You know, like what are the changes in phytoplankton structure that's going to impact fisheries? Um, what are the changes in a harmful algal blooms that are going to impact us living on the coast? What are the changes in the cloud formation? What are the changes in the aerosol distribution? There's more and more fires. How is that going to impact everything? Those are those global impacts. But, you know, selfishly speaking, will the water on the beach be good enough for me to swim? Are those oysters good? There's a, all the question that base will be able to, you know, find the answers for. So I'm really excited by this mission. Ivana, I'm also excited for this. Thank you so much. This is going to be a great step for all of us scientists as well. We look forward to the data that you can get back from this and good luck on the mission. Thank you. Take care.
All right, and scene, Ivana, you are fantastic. And and seriously, this this is awesome. This is revolutionary. I, incredible. It, it is. It, it's 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 pretty cool. It's like I'm I'm like I'm not, I'm not selling. This is pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, one question, just uh, outside of that little spiel that we just did. So uh, as a meteorologist here, uh, from the research that you're going to get, like how long do you think that we're going to be able to kind of get more data that is sent down to us common folk? Uh, once it's processed, because I would love yeah, to read yeah. some reports. Yeah, so like, you know, yeah, we're going to start, you know, like so we get a satellite in two months from the engineering. So we have to kind of figure out, you know, is it actually talking normal, calibrated? And pretty much the data is going to be start working right away. Uh, we have already existing collaboration with NOAA. They're just sitting for us to start producing and pushing towards there. And that's probably where you're getting most of the, you know, support from meteorology. So we've been talking really with fisheries people. We've been talking with like, you know, the NOAA air people, whatever their name is, weather people. So that data is going to be start shooting that direction right away. And probably they're going to be the one they're going to making like, you know, products they are more probably susceptible for like for your needs and things like that. We've been working really with a bunch of people across agencies, local, global, uh, national, international to really start taking data right away. Uh, and uh, the launch tonight is after 1 a.m. Why are they doing it so late? Is there a specific reason as weather wise? It, 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 I just no, no, it's not weather wise. It's been scheduled. It's just orbit. That's the way that they, I think the smart people that I don't hang out with calculate <laughs> when the things have to be long. I'm like, that's way above my pay grade. I'm just going there and I'm, I'm partying, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, again, I'm not going to take any much, uh, more of your time. I appreciate the interview and take care.